exponents, roots, and order of operations, four different problems that we are going to look at, or objectives, I should say, that we're going to look at. This is all review of things you've learned in previous math classes. Um, just a refresher I was gonna give you to get us started. So if we start with exponents, our first objective, exponents are a way to write repeated factors or repeated multiplication. So if we look at this, we have the number two multiplied five times. So we could rewrite that as two to the fifth power. However many times it's multiplied is how many like what we call factors and that's what our number on top is gonna be. So in this case, when we talk about this, the five is the exponent, the little number on top, the two is the base, the big number is what we consider the base. So let's look at just rewriting some. Here I have the number two sevenths. So in here you have to write it because it's a fraction and it's repeated. You have to put it in parentheses and it's repeated four times. Okay, if you don't put it in parentheses, it looks like just the top number is to the fourth power and it wouldn't be correct. For part B, we have negative 10 written three times. Again, it's in parentheses. The negative is in the parentheses. We need to keep it that way. And it's three times, so negative 10 cubed. And down here, it's a Y. You don't have to put it in parentheses because it's just one number and it's not negative. Count how many times we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this would be Y to the eighth as our final answer. We also will, instead of just writing it, we will evaluate them. Use your calculator. So for part A, you will just in your calculator put in three to the fourth power. 81, practice using your calculator. Make sure you can use it. Here, again, put the parentheses in your calculator. Negative three squared is the same thing as negative three times negative three. Negative three times negative three is a positive nine. Down here, this is like a negative and only the three is squared. So it's negative and then it would be three times three for three squared. So this one would be negative nine. So keep that in mind. You parentheses are very important and we need to keep them. Next, we're gonna look at square roots. Square roots is simply the opposite or the inverse of squaring a number. And we call it a square root. So the square root of 36 is six because six squared equals 36. So you think about what squared gives you the number. Remember when we talk about square roots, we write them with this square root sign right here. So we're gonna just do some examples of finding square roots. Some have negatives and we'll figure out what to do with those. So this one, when I have a fraction, the negatives out front, it stays out front. When you have a fraction, it's like just doing the square root of the top number over the square root of the bottom number. So in this case, keep the negative, use your calculator if you need to. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 81 is nine. Always do them separately. I don't want decimals. Leave your answer as a fraction, especially if it starts as a fraction. Part B, square root of 49. You either know it or plug it in your calculator. Seven squared is 49, so this one's seven. Over here, negative square root of 49, so this would be negative seven. When the negative is on the inside, we can't do it. That would give us an imaginary number. If you plug it in your calculator, you're going to get an error message. So in this case right now, you can just put, you can write not possible. You can simplify it to um, does not exist or not a real number. Lots of options that you can write on that for if the negative's on the inside. Next, we're gonna look at order of operations. So in order of operations, I'm gonna underline in here what you need to fill in on your notes. We're gonna work, work separately above and below any fraction bar. So work on just the top and just the bottom. If grouping symbols such as parentheses, brackets, or absolute value bars are present, we're gonna start with the innermost set and work our way outward. Okay, we'll evaluate all powers, roots, and absolute values next. Then you're going to do multiplication or division. Make sure it's in order from left to right. And then the last thing you do is add or subtract, and that is from left to right. You didn't have to write in add or subtract, but I underlined it. Make sure you're always working from left to right when you're multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. So this is like steps in when you're doing it. Some of you might remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. If you like that, you can use that also. So just keep that in mind. And again, remember you're always working from left to right. 
So when we look at an example here, first of all, know that I'm never taking your calculator away. So even in class, if you have a calculator, you would be able to type these in. But we're going to work them out as if we didn't have one. So multiplication and addition is what we have. Multiplication comes first. So the first thing we have is 5 times 9. So 5 times 9 is 45. Keep the plus sign. 2 times 4 is 8. And then 45 plus 8 is 53. So that's our first one. Next, we have 4 minus 12 divided by 4 times 2. So again, we're working with this division and multiplication from left to right first. So we're just going to keep this 4 minus. And think about keeping this in parentheses if you want. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then we still have our times 2. So this would be 4 minus 3 times 2 is 6. And that would give us negative 2. Part C, we have some exponents and some parentheses, so we're going to work with all those. So if we do our parentheses, 4 plus 2, this would give us 6. Minus, minus and addition are always last. 3 squared is 9. Minus sign again, 8 minus 3 is 5. So now we're just multi or subtracting here. So if we do it in order from left to right, 6 minus 9, this part here is negative 3. Then we have minus our 5, negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Again, if you plug things into your calculator, you should be getting the same answer if you just type it in just like it looks. And our last one for order of operations is a fraction. So if you recall, in the fraction, we're going to work on just the top and then just the bottom. So I'm going to start with just the top on here. So we're going to do any multiplication division first. I have some multiplication right here. 1 half times 10, that would be 5. And then I have minus 6. Plus, and we can do the square root of 9, which is 3. I'm just going to continue across the top. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. That would be negative 1 plus 3. So then negative 1 plus 3 would give us a 2 on top. And then the next thing we have on the bottom is 5, 6 times 12. So if we do the multiplication right here, that would give us 10 minus, we need to figure out in here. So we're going to do the square first. So 3 times 2 squared is 4. And then we would have 10 minus 12. And 10 minus 12 is negative 2. Simplify here. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. for our final answer. So next, evaluate algebraic expressions for given values of variables. So this is just plugging in. So in here, just know that algebraic expression means I don't have an equal sign anywhere. Okay, 6AB, 5N minus 9N, and so forth. We don't have anything going on. No equals is an algebraic expression. We're just going to substitute in vari our numbers for the variables and simplify using our order of operations. So. For example, I want to evaluate this function or this algebraic expression when w is 4, x is negative 12, y is 64, and z is negative 3. So if we do that, if we look at it, I don't have any w's on here, so I don't have to worry about that one. We're not going to use it. x is negative 12, so that means we would have 5 times negative 12 plus my z over here is negative 3, negative 3. Square root of y is 64. Again, our x is negative 12, ne negative 12 minus 1. And then we're just going to work across the top and then across the bottom. So working the top, 5 times negative 12 would give us negative 60. Then I have plus, I have negative 3. And then times the square root of 64 is 8. Bottom, we can just simplify. Negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. So then working across top and bottom, I have negative 60 again. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. Bottom, we don't have anything to do with. So last, combine our top. Negative 60 plus negative 24 is going to be negative 84 divided by negative 13. 
We need to simplify as much as we can. When we have a negative on top and a negative on bottom, remember a negative times, an, or negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this would just be 84 over 13 as our final answer. Okay, we have one left to do when we're done for the day. So we're gonna evaluate w squared plus two z cubed. If w is four and x is negative 12, y is 64 and z is negative three again. So plug in what we need. I need w squared, w is four over here. So this is gonna give us four squared plus two. And then we're gonna have z and our z is negative three. So it's negative three cubed. Then work down, four squared is 16, plus two and negative three cubed. If we plug that into our calculator, or negative three times negative three times negative three, negative 27. So this would be 16 plus two times negative 27 is negative 54. And then if you do 16 plus negative 54, you get negative 38 for your answer. So when you come to class next week, we will be working on homework over all of these order of operations, exponents, and radicals. Have a good weekend.